Hello out there, and in front of you today is a new release from Benchmade Knife Company, and this is the 945, the highly anticipated little brother to the 940. And this is one that a lot of people have been asking about for a long time, and uh, once it was announced about a month ago, it became very highly anticipated. And I sort of like it when Benchmade does stuff like this, where they will announce something with very little um, run in, run in time and then uh, and then release it very quickly thereafter. It's pretty cool just to be able to to see something and then within a month have it in your hands. And so that's what we have with this, the 945, the small 940 designed by Warren Osborne. And I think the reason for this, and actually I don't think, I know, the reason for this model coming out now, after uh, all this time, is that they are commemorating the 20th anniversary of the 940 over at Benchmade Knife Company. They've released a number of different uh, 940 variations and limited runs over the course of the year. They have another one coming out, I think, in about a week or maybe just a couple days. But uh, this is just part of that. They're extending that line and, and sort of paying tribute to that classic model that has been really hailed as one of the best EDCs ever and really put that company, the Benchmade company, on the map in a way like uh, almost no other model has. So what we have here is a smaller version of it. What I'll tell you guys is my biggest curiosity was how this knife was going to be sized in terms of how many it was going to be. Would it be super small? Would it be a little bit bigger? And the exact size that I was hoping it would be is what it is. So a lot of the video today is going to be uh, spent on doing some size comparisons between this and some other Benchmade's uh, current ones and discontinued ones, and then um, and then going through the merits of the knife, the variation, some of the other specs, and all that stuff. And uh, and yeah, the stuff that we always do. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get started. So size comparisons. The first thing that I wanted to bring out is the Mini Griptilian. So this is my favorite platform my favorite model of all time probably and you can see it is pretty pretty similar in terms of the overall size and that's sort of why I'm so happy about it is that when it comes to to one knife you know I really like this size knife and I like the differences between this and the mini grip just in that it's a little bit uh, less tall a little bit less clunky so um, even though the overall length is very similar the weights and the the feel of them in hand will be very different so that's the mini grip. So you can also imagine that the mini freak is going to be sort of on the same uh, wavelength there. These are AWT scales, so they're, you know, very different from the Benchmade ones. But the overall length, and even though you can't see that with the perspective right here, the overall length is almost identical. So, I mean, we're talking about maybe a quarter of an inch longer with the mini freak. So... Again, you have a very similar length, but a very different overall vibe and feel to the knife. Let's bring in a couple Osborns. So here is the Emissary, the smaller Emissary. This is an Axis Assisted Knife. And this one um, is probably the most similar in, in all features to the 945, just in terms of uh, size and length and weight and thickness. There is a big distinct difference in the ergos, though, as you can see the different lines of the um, of the frame here. And these are very, very Osborne specific lines that you have on the emissary here. Uh, that. And then the one that I was most curious about is the 770. This is the knife that I was thinking, well, maybe it's going to be this size. Maybe it's going to be super small, super small, gents, like focused kind of knife like this and you can see there's really not that much difference in that overall length between the 770 and the 945 but the feel of the knife and just the idea when you get it in your hand and what it can do is is extremely different so that's why i was really happy with the decision to make the 945 the size they did i'll bring in the 943 i don't have an actual 940 because i stick with this bad boy um for my, my 940 needs, the 943 takes care of them. When you line up the tips, you can see you've got only about an extra half inch of cutting edge. Overall, you've got about one inch overall. So it isn't that mini, you know, it's not a tiny knife and the 940 or 943 weren't like massive knives to begin with, but it is just a smaller version. So one of the things in, as far as the specs go that I really like is just how they really made it light 1.99 ounces and the way they did that is they really 
have um, depended on the strength and the structure of the G10. You can see the mini grip at 2.76. The structure of the G10 up here um, and not having full liners. So the knife still feels extremely rigid, but it does cut a little bit of weight. I mean, the emissary is aluminum and yeah, so that tells you something, but it's not gonna be quite as light as a 770. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about the model. Let's talk about some of the things about it that I, I really like and some of the things they did here. So we're starting with um, S30V blade steel, which for me is a, a great steel still. Um, when I got into knives, S30V was the be all end all. It was the premium steel that you wanted to be able to get a knife in. And it was the knife, that, uh, the knife steel that the 940 had. So I think it's appropriate that this is the, uh, the steel that they're using now. So I have zero problem with that. Uh, as far as the billboarding goes, you can see over here, the thing that I really like, really like, is that it says Osborne Design. So Warren Osborne, the designer, is not with us anymore, but that said, this is 100% his knife, and it wouldn't have made any sense, and it would have been disappointing for them to have left this off of the blade. So it's very cool that Benchmade to do that. This does also have the first production uh, designation. There's not a numbered run here, so that might mean that it's a very large first production, which is what I think. It also could mean that they just weren't keeping track and they didn't know how many they were gonna make and they just started pumping them out. <laughs> so who knows? But, um, but yep, it's first production, but not numbered. All right, um, I am pretty darn happy with the blade here. And there's something about the 940 that I just didn't prefer the blade shape over the 943, you guys know that. I talk about the 943 all the time, just being such a great blade shape. One of the knocks though that I've heard about the 940 is that it's generally just like a thicker knife behind the edge and it's not that great of a knife to cut with. And while I don't really use calipers and I'm not that specific when it comes to, you know, the science of everything, um, what I can tell you is that this knife doesn't feel that thick behind the edge. So it doesn't feel like it's going to be a problem here. So um, if the 940 is thick, um, this isn't noticeably thick the way that some of the knives that I've, I've seen, especially recently, to, <laughs> to be honest, have been. So I'm not anticipating any real problems with that in terms of performance. This one is going to be staying in my collection, hopefully for a very, very long time. So you will hear more about that as I use it more. And, um, and yeah, I do follow-ups. So there we have that. Now let's move on back and take a look at the rest of the frame. So we have G10 handle scales on this knife. Um, I'm super stoked about the G10. It looks great. It's this matte finish. It isn't high polished, so it's not that like slick or anything. Um, it's a good, good looking G10. And furthermore, we have this very, very nice piece of a uh, blue G10 that sort of like slid right in there, sort of like on the Super Freak. So it looks really classy. And one thing that I like about what they did is uh, this variation of the knife isn't one that's available in the 940. So it sort of is coming out with its own unique kind of feel. You know, they could have gone with like the, the green aluminum or green G10 and purple backspace, or they could have done all that. And that would have been neat. And it would have like harkened back to that model. And, and that's awesome. But um, I bet you will get that eventually. So let's just wait and, and get something different and new for now. And so, yeah, that's sort of how I feel about, about the look of it. Um, I'm happy. I'm happy that it's standing on its own two feet. And again, for the people who don't care for this, let's be, uh, let's be real. They're going to release probably 5,000 different versions of this over the course of time. So <laughs> you'll probably be able to find one that fits uh, your exact preferences. All right, then as we continue to go on back, you can see we have this pocket clip. It should look familiar to a lot of people. It is the split arrow clip or the dick clip. Um, it is a little dick. <laughs> it's a smaller dick clip than the other dick clips. <laughs> How many times can I say dick clip in 10 seconds? Let's see. Um, but if you take a look at it, so it is a smaller one than the standard uh, split arrow clip. Uh, honestly, I really like it. I like the split arrow clip, Dick Clip Army, you know. <laughs> um, and on this, while I know a lot of people are asking why not use like the, the mini bug out clip or just a deep carry clip in general, I think this is just fine. I'm not changing it. I think that there's a little bit of room for you to make it deeper carry if you do, you know, get one of those other clips. But for me, not necessary at all. All right, we open up the knife. You can see inside and you can probably see that the liners stop about like 
two thirds of the way through the frame of the knife, maybe a little bit less than that. There's also one other thing to note, and maybe I'll insert a picture on a different model, but when you're disassembling this knife, what you might be used to with Benchmade access locks is that the liners of the knife have a little hole punched in them where the Omega spring inserts. Benchmade, um, I don't know if they're transitioning away from that completely, but I saw on a buddy of mine, buddy of mine's mini grip, and you actually might be able to see deep in there right now where it is. Uh, a buddy of mine had a mini grip where there isn't that hole anymore. There's just a notch. And this knife has that same notch where um, it's not a specific hole. The, the um, Omega spring just slides into a, a notch and seems like it wouldn't affect performance whatsoever but it should make it easier for them to assemble and for us to disassemble and put back together. So I think that's probably a good thing. Progress. But yeah, guys, um, as far as the construction goes, it's a very solid knife. No issues with lockup or uh, strength here. So that's really good. And then as far as action goes, it doesn't quite drop shut. I haven't taken it apart yet. Um, I've lubricated it. And what happens is when it's dropping, if I don't give it a little bit of momentum, it just gets stuck right here. So I'm sure that's something that I could adjust and make better. But again, all I have to do is give it a little bit of wrist and we're good. So I'm not really worried about that. Um, you're getting the whole 30 second spiel right now. And now for 30 seconds of uninterrupted, unadulterated Osborne action. All right. Yeah, so uh, I'm good with the action. No issues with this knife. Honestly, guys, I think that this is pretty close to a home run as far as things go. And it's a no-brainer. It's a knife that, um, that people have been asking for for a long time. And um, uh, one of my buddies especially, I remember talking uh, to him about it back in February. His name is, is Josh Adam. He has a channel. I'm actually going to link to it down below because he just got back into making videos. He made one about his 945. Definitely slide over and check his channel out if you want to, uh, to support someone getting back into making YouTube videos and see a different perspective. Good dude. And again, he called this back in February. So very cool of, uh, of him to, to get the knife that he'd been looking forward to for, for so long. All right. As far as the price goes, this one runs at 174. It's the same price as the 940-2, which is the G10 version of the 940. What I'll say to that is, is yeah, guys, it it's not cheap. Um, it's not cheap, but you're getting a really good knife, first of all. But the other thing, and we've talked about price gouging, and we've talked about like inflation in um, in the marketplace with a number of models from a number of companies, Benchmade's included. But the 940 has stayed pretty steady for a, a long time. I mean, the, the price on that hasn't really gone up too high. I think the aluminum version has gone up like 10 bucks in the past seven years, something like that. I remember buying my, my 940, my first 940. Yeah, it was like seven or eight years ago, and it was around 170 bucks. So that hasn't changed all that much where, I mean, it could have. And, and what I see here is, yeah, it's a, it's a more expensive knife, but it sort of fits in line with what Benchmade is doing. And certainly if you look at some of their competitors, um, this is cheaper than, than what you would get from them. So I don't know. I think that if uh, you're holding back because of like maybe the colors or the steel or something like that, then maybe be patient. I mean, when I've shown a number of a number of very good Benchmade knives that fit in this size category that can hold you over until you get the right 945. That's for sure. So while this is going to be a good like all purpose knife, almost like a gent piece in some capacities, but still a very good one to use, you know, like really good all around. Um, all of the other knives that I've shown are going to be 
good in those capacities as well. So, you know, it, it's not a necessary thing to drop all the money on if you're not 100% happy with what you have here. Because again, you can always hold out and, and see what else is going to be out there. Aftermarket scales, I'm sure those are coming. You know, there's going to be a lot of other options to, to make one of these fit your needs better if it doesn't as it is now. But I feel like 174 is fair. So um, that's what I got, guys. Any other questions, comments, complaints, suggestions, let me know. I appreciate it. I will talk with you soon. Take care and have a good one.